This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. PSOJ calls a for Veil Royal Summit on Crime. The private sector organization of Jamaica is urging Prime Minister Andrew Holness to hold a Veil Royal Summit with a parliamentary opposition to discuss the issue of crime and violence. PSOJ President Keith Duncan said while both parties have separately advocated for consensus around crime and violence, it is time for them to remove the confusion from people's mind by finally acting on the issue. Mr. Duncan, who was speaking with the news on Sunday, said the PSOJ's Crime Monitoring Oversight Committee has been holding regular meetings in a bid to find short-term containment measures for the upsurge in violence, but there is still no consensus. Yeah, we are calling on, um, they, you know, they have said it. Um, they have been um, in, in various um, forums together and separately, um, you know, um, advocating for consensus around um, crime and violence. Now, let us, let us see, as a country, let's see that, because it would go a long way to removing the confusion from people's minds. And if we had a united country around crime, it would give us that much more of a, a, a psychological boost to really defeat the, the, the gangs who um, hold us at hostage. We have been at the table through the Consensus Monitoring Oversight Committee. What we have not been able to gain alignment around is the, um, the short-term crime containment strategies. And that is where we say we need, there needs to be focus. Now, in terms of the, um, the, the, minute, the, the opposition leader calling for Vail Royal Talks, that is, that is a very positive signal. And we know that there have been conversations, but now we need to ensure that now that we have them focus around this area, short-term containment of crime. Senator Bunting, who was speaking at a St. Andrew's South West South Western Constituency meeting on Sunday evening, warned that the country is facing a crisis which needs urgent attention. In addition to the crime issue, he suggested that the Holness administration has also failed at improving the education system while the health care system is on the verge of collapse. It burned them, them and their apologies. Them say I quote too much statistics, uh -huh. but what is the only answer to them lies is statistics. I you know they say there is lies, damn lies and statistics. But the truth, the truth is hard for defeat. Even if you can't get away with it in the short term, you can't defeat it in the long term. And the truth is that these people have been a complete failure at fighting crime. Complete failure. They have spent more money and achieved less. They have been a complete failure at improving the education system commercially. What we have is a student body suffering from learning loss. And they were one. The healthcare system is on the verge of collapse. NWU awaiting meeting with Education Ministry regarding Brussels' concerns. The National Workers' Union says it is awaiting word from the Ministry of Education concerning when the parties will meet to discuss the ministry's decision to curtail the responsibilities of bursars at the so-called bursar-paid schools. Last week, Education Minister Favol Williams said the government will be moving away from teachers being paid by bursars and have educators receive their salaries directly from the ministry. However, the bursars have expressed a concern about the plan and what it will mean for their future. The NWU, which represents the workers, wrote to the ministry on the weekend requesting a meeting. NWU General Secretary Granville Valentine told the news that he met with the members of the Bursars Association of Jamaica on Monday and they remain concerned about job security with the pending policy change. We are calling on the minister or the permanent secretary to immediately convene a meeting. We are willing to come at any time of the day, be it in the morning, the noon, or the night, because it is hurting our members and it is hurting the working class people of Jamaica. The truth is, and the government understands very well, I am sure, that where there are contractual arrangements and discussions and, and, and relationship with trade unions, that even if you're creating a policy, then there ought to be dialogue. The collective bargain process cannot be re removed unilaterally. So the reasonable expectation 
even if you are creating a policy change, then the parties involved ought to be involved in the discussion and the, and, and the, the breaking out of this policy. We are expecting that the matter must be discussed at the table before any implementation. You know, you cannot ask us to cooperate with you, but fail to have dialogue and show some respect for the process, show some respect for your partners. More noise complaints since COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson says the police force is receiving an increased number of complaints from residents of night noises following the lifting of the COVID-19 restrictions. General Anderson, who was speaking Monday at the police traffic headquarters, said the complaints have again raised the noise abatement issue. He explained that complaints go down significantly in cases where events keep their noise down to reasonable levels. General Anderson urged promoters of events to be considerable and respect the rights of other citizens who may want to sleep and rest at night. Businesses are reopening, places of entertainment have reopened. The expectation is that they do this reopening with some consideration for other members uh, of the public who may want to sleep and rest. So this noise abatement issue has arisen again. And we're here, we are getting a number of complaints. Now, we have seen where when people keep their levels, their noise levels down to reasonable levels, the complaints go down significantly. $500,000 reward for information leading to killers of homeless man, says McKenzie. Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Desmond McKenzie, has strongly condemned the murder of Lionel Johnson, the homeless man who was set on fire in the vicinity of Hero Circle early yesterday morning, and is offering a $500,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of the perpetrators. This is an absolute savage act. While we still don't know the motive for this heinous crime, the suffering that Mr. Johnson would have endured, as well as the taking of his life, reflects for me the lowest level of depravity, said Mackenzie. He was well known to the Kingston and the St. Andrew Poor Relief Department, which regularly supported him by providing food, and at times he stayed at the night shelter at the Church Street. I condemn this horrible act and I call on my fellow Jamaicans to do the same, as well as to provide the police with any available facts. The Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development is also offering a reward of $500,000 for information that results in the arrest of the person or persons responsible. No civilized society can allow acts such as these to go unchallenged and unpunished. The minister added, I also want to urge our brothers and the sisters who make up the homeless population to use the night shelters regularly, not only for food and hygiene, but also for safety. While I know that some of them are inclined to spend the night on the streets, I am appealing to them to stay at these facilities which are built for them and where they are assured of protection. I have also asked the local authorities to appeal directly to them in this regard through their daily interactions. Prime Minister Holness says that Jamaica lacks institutional capacity to fight crime. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has acknowledged that Jamaica lacks the institutional capacity to combat violence. Mr. Holness, who is visiting Trinidad and Tobago as part of its 60th anniversary of political independence from Britain, made the admission during a press conference on Monday morning. The Prime Minister said that notwithstanding the implementation of a multidimensional strategy, his administration will have to enhance and create additional measures to deal with violence. The measures, he said, will require new legislation and an increase in professionals, such as psychologists and social workers, as well as other support mechanisms to assist the victims of crime. Mr. Holness argued that this approach is necessary because current methods tend to focus on the perpetrator of the violence and the less so on the victim and what they suffer under this needs to change. That will require new legislation. It will require an increase in the professionals to treat with it because when we speak about violence, we tend to stop at the act and not follow through on the trauma. So we tend to want to focus on the perpetrator of the violence, less so on the victim. 
and what they suffer. And so we will have to build out an entire articulated uh, structure of uh, the, you know, the, 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 the psychologists and the social workers and the other support mechanisms to treat with the victims so that they don't go on to produce perpetrators. So we break the cycle. And that's an entirely new system that we will have to, to enhance and, and create. Uh, the challenge, of course, is managing what I call enterprise crime, criminal gangs whose sole purpose is to uh, infiltrate state organizations, corrupt institutions, uh, and use that power that they gain to facilitate illegal trade, whether it is narcotics coming through the trade routes from South or Central America, or human trafficking, or uncustom goods, fake and imitation goods, all of those are uh, part of the domain of the enterprise crime, and we need to pay close attention to that. There is just uh, an incredible level of commonality. Uh, and so, whilst we won't say too much on what we're going to be doing, but certainly along the lines of collaboration and sharing information, uh, we will be able to have an impact. But from a political standpoint, um, especially geopolitically, uh, we need to amplify our voice regarding the flow of um, small arms and light weapons uh, into our region, which, as we always say, we don't make guns, uh, we don't make ammunitions, but they are so widely available in, in our society. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.